Good morning everyone and welcome to our backyard. In today's video I am going to do a walkabout in the garden. I have been gone for 12 days visiting family and especially my new little grandson and there's been a lot that's happened in the garden in just 12 days. My name is Crystal and I garden in zone 9 south of Houston close to the Texas Gulf Coast and we have clay soil, high humidity, and typically quite a bit of rain throughout the year. And I came home to an explosion of blooms and it's so much fun. I missed the major part of our hummingbird migration, but I'll still have hummers come through all the way through the beginning of August. And so even though I missed the huge influx of hummingbirds as I was gone, I'm going to see lots of hummingbirds still um, come through the area. So the first plant I'd like to share with you is my Cardinal Climber vine. And this vine is an annual that I grow from seed every year and I collect the seed every year. And when I left 12 days ago, this plant had a few flowers here and there, but it is flowering so wonderfully right now. And this is the reason why I plant it. I'm going to put at the top of your screen a video, or I should say, I'm going to include the whole playlist of videos that I have done on this vine. It is a beautiful grower. It's a cross between a red morning glory and a red cypress vine. And this vine is true to seed. It is has a feathery leaf and this trumpet shaped flower is a hit with larger butterflies and also hummingbirds. Hummingbirds love this flower and I love this vine. We plant this vine every spring and it depends on when our last frost is. This year we planted it the I think March 7th 8th 9th maybe somewhere in there and it just grows and grows and grows and the vines themselves the stems can get very nice and thick to support all of this structure and right now I'm having a little bit of an issue with my vines growing together. I used to have a nice arch here and I would pretty much keep it maintained but it's decided in my absence it's grown together. So this is this is just the beauty and the reason I have this vine. So the next plant I'd like to draw your attention to is the salvia. I have salvia amante which has a beautiful purple flower and dark calyx. This is this dark stem part. And then right next to it, I plant Salvia Amante. And this has a very nice hot pink, vibrant color. And when I left, you know, it was flowering okay, but this is just in a beautiful bloom right now and so all the pollinators are loving this salvia. So when I left my red porter weed was blooming but it has also grown in these 12 days. I was just surprised how large it has gotten. It's starting to come out in between both my salvia it's growing together, which I was surprised with. And 
of course it's flowering beautifully in the hummers. All pollinators love porter weed. I mentioned in a video that I did earlier just on porter weed is this is a member of the verbena family and it is a prolific nectar producer. That's why it's so popular with the pollinators. I'll put that a link to that video up top on this porter weed. I have lots of different colors of porter weed. I have this gorgeous red. I have purple porter weed. I have pink porter weed. I have blue porter weed, which looks more like a periwinkle, but it's called a blue porter weed. I have a dwarf red porter weed. The bloom stem is thin, just like the blue porter weed, and the blooms are smaller, but it's certainly down here for me is not a dwarf. It is beautiful, large, and it's loving its life in this space. I also have a coral porter weed. Looks kind of somewhat like red, but it is known as a coral. And then I have a kind of like an orchid color, lavender color porter weed. I thought I was going to lose this one, but it is bouncing back. And I do have porter weed all over my yard, so I can see the hummingbirds. And I especially like this one right outside my kitchen window because the hummingbirds come here <laughs> all throughout the day and it's fun to see them up close. I typically will deadhead my porter weed and when the stem gets to look like this brown color, it is ready to be deadheaded and I will cut it right here at the base. And I try to do that pretty regularly to keep to keep the porter weed flowering. I don't you don't really have to. I just prefer not to see those dead stems. In the prior video that I did, I focused on this plant, which is a host butterfly plant to the yellow senna butterflies and the excuse me the sulfur the yellow sulfur butterflies and this is the candlestick tree or the senna alata and it's opening its buds so I wanted to share that I was really happy to see the flowers my John Fanuc phlox is still having buds come up and flower which I'm really happy to see. And my Rose of Sharon, my Blue Rose of Sharon has just been, oh, it's so pretty. It's being overtaken somewhat by my Blue Porter Weed that's next to it, but I've got nice lots of buds here on the Rose of Sharon, and this is a pollinator favorite. I love the blooms that I'm seeing. And this blue porter weed, I'm really surprised. It was a volunteer, and it's probably a couple, and it was a volunteer that grew up from the ground. And look at this, it is thriving, goodness. I am just so surprised on how this little patches through here and then of course I had a volunteer 
Tiffonia.com. Well, good morning. Got hummingbirds that are coming in and saying, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing out here? This is the reason I think I've mentioned in prior videos that I put in this bed was for this bush. A Rose of Sharon Blue Chiffon from Proven Winners. And while I do love the flower, it's taken this bush a long time to grow. It, I got it as a tiny, teeny, tiny plant through the mail, which I was disappointed that it was so incredibly small. And this is its fourth summer, and it's finally sprouting to where it's going to somewhat look like a bush. Now the intent was not to crowd it like this. So it is crowded and it is crowded by the blue porter weed. So I will need to take out this blue porter weed, but for this season that was staying in here just because of the attraction that it brings to all the pollinators. I shared with you in my August garden tour that I do love vines. I love to grow vines vertically because of the vertical interest. And I have two different five-piece panels. This five-piece panel or trellis system is full of passion vine. And I absolutely love how this grows, how it looks, how it's lush. And it has the host plant, it's the host plant to the Gulf fritillary butterfly. And because of that, I have Gulf fritillaries in my yard, pretty near, pretty much year round, unless we have a freeze. Isn't that beautiful? I love the birds singing. So I'm in the back of my two trellises and you can see how they're growing together. So I've got passion vine that's over here amongst the cardinal climber and cardinal climber that's starting to go into the passion vine. That was not the plan. But at this point, I'm not going to rip any of this out because it is flowering. So I'm behind both sets of trellises here. And you can see, oh, how lush this is. So another plant I'd like to mention this morning is my David Verity Kufia. And this is a very prolific flowerer. It's also a favorite of the pollinators, but David Verity is a larger type. And this is, even though I have it in a container, let me show you down here, I do have it in a container. It is taller than I am now. So I love what this plant does. I love what it attracts. It stays really healthy even through the high heat that we have here in the summer. And it draws in the pollinators. Another plant I was surprised to see flowering so gorgeously is my blue butterfly, Clerodendron. It has buds and flowers at all of its tips. I don't think I've seen this before. I certainly have seen flowers, but not as many flowers as it is sporting right now. They're pretty delicate, but boy, they attract the pollinators. And its claim to fame on its name is supposedly it looks airy like a butterfly. It's pretty. 
Thank you for joining me today as we looked at some of the plants in the garden that have really come to life in these 12 days that I have been gone. And probably come to life is not a good way to say it. It's more that they've come into a beautiful bloom. So I hope you have a great day today. And I hope to see you again soon.